and welcome to another episode of How to Pass the Math FSA. This is the fifth grade edition and this happens to be the last lesson, lesson 22. What? what? Today we will be working on two standards. It's maths.5.g.2.3 and g.2.4. G stands for geometry and we are working on two dimensional figures. Now, fifth grade. You've been working on these 2D shapes since third grade, so you should be pretty refined in these, um, and this should be a fun lesson. So, without further ado, let me say it one last time. Let me teach ya. So, dudes and dudettes, I'm totally stoked about today's lesson. I just love, love, love 2D shapes. They're so fun. All right. Example one, it says two descriptions are given. If the shape cannot be drawn, select cannot be drawn. If the shape can be drawn, use the connect line tool to draw an example of each shape. The first one says to draw a rhombus that is a square. Okay, so a rhombus that is a square, can I draw that? Let me just kind of brainstorm over here, a rhombus, here's a square, and a rhombus means that it has all equal sides, and a square always has all equal sides. So I'm going to draw a square. And since I'm making them one, two, three units, I need to make it three units all the way around, connect it, boom, boom, boom. So what I would have done is clicked add point and put point, add point, point, add point, point, add point, add point, and then connect the lines using this tool. And should you need to delete, you'll use this one right here. So it can be drawn. Draw a rhombus that is not a square. Well, that would look like y'all call the slanty squares, but they're not really squares because they don't have right angles. So something kind of like that. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm trying to draw three a piece again. But I kind of, this one's a little bit harder. Just like so. That's how you do it. All right, so example two says enter the description into the correct location on the Venn diagram. For those of you who have never been to school in your whole life, this is a Venn diagram. All right, so here we have the descriptions and we're going to put them up here. So. This right here, I actually measured it, and this side is longer than this side. So this right here would be a parallelogram. It's just me adding extra notes, and this is my rectangle. Okay. <clears throat> Contains right angles. A parallelogram, this parallelogram, does not have right angles. So it's going to go here. Contains. right angles. Done with you. Contains no right angles. That would be my parallelogram right here. Contains no right angles. Done with you. Now I'm, I'm imagining that a question like this would actually be like a drag and drop into this. So we actually have to write them out for our paper-based version, but you'll be taking the computerized test, drag and drop all the way. Opposite sides congruent. This side is congruent to this side. This side is congruent to this side. A rectangle, this side is congruent to this side. I should probably put it like that. This side is congruent to this side. So both of them have opposite sides that are congruent. Congruent. Rectangle. That's only this dude over here. Rectangle. Parallelogram would actually be both because a rectangle also has a set of parallel sides. So I need to put this in the middle. And quadrilateral, both are four sides, so that would go in the middle too. And that is how you do a type of problem like this. All right, example three, match each description with the correct term. We have a square rhombus trapezoid, and over here it says must contain right angles. 
which ones must contain right angles? That would be a square. How about all sides congruent? That would be a square and a rhombus will have all sides congruent. Only one set of parallel sides? That would be a square and a rhombus. Um, so just to make sure that you know, so this is would be my square. A rhombus usually looks something kind of like that. And then our trapezoid usually looks something kind of like this. All right, with two, with one set of parallel lines. So you can see here, the square contains the right angle, not these guys. All sides congruent, that's for a square. It's also for a rhombus. And oops, I didn't mean to put this there. Ooh, I read this wrong. I bet some of you were like, no, Miss McCarthy, you did this wrong. You didn't read carefully. Because a trapezoid only has one set of parallel sides. I just said that. That is called me making a mistake, mistake and being human, but also going back to check my work. So I'm glad that I did that. And of course, if this were a pencil, I would erase out of those boxes or uncheck or however it's going to be measured on your test. Example four, select all the names of figures that could also be classified as a square. So a square has to have all sides the same or congruent, and it must have four right angles. Okay, so could a triangle also be classified as a square? No, because a triangle has three sides. What about a parallelogram? Well, a parallelogram has two sets of parallel sides. Here would be one set, and here is the other set. So yes, this would be an answer. What about a rectangle? A rectangle must have four right angles, and also the opposite sides must be congruent, which a square has. A hexagon has to have six sides. Do you see six sides? No, that's wrong. A quadrilateral must have four sides. And a square, of course, has four sides. And a rhombus must have all four sides that are equal. We have one, two, three, four sides that are equal. So those four would be the answers that we need to select to receive full credit. Last question for this lesson. What attribute does an equilateral triangle, a rhombus, and a regular hexagon have in common? What attribute? Okay, so an equilateral triangle has three sides ah, that are all the same. Okay, a rhombus has four sides and those four sides are all the same. And a regular hexagon, I'm gonna do my best here, has four sides that are, sorry, not four, six sides that are all the same. Those little ticky marks mean that they're all the same. This is a horrible drawing of a hexagon, but I'm showing you that I'm intending to make it all the same by doing that. So what do they all have in common? Well they all have all sides the same. And what is that called? That's called a regular polygon. So we can say they are all regular polygons Nope, they're not all regular polygons because regular polygons also have equal angles. So that's not right. You're seeing me make a mistake here. We're just trying to get at that they are all, they are all polygons with congruent sides. That's what we need. Okay, so it's not that it's a regular polygon because a regular polygon has equal sides 
and equal angles. So that works for the triangle, our equilateral triangle, and our regular hexagon. Um, but for our rhombus, we've got an acute angle here and an obtuse, so those angles are not the same. So we need to go with that they're polygons with congruent sides. Everybody makes mistakes, and that's why pencils have erasers. Unfortunately, I don't have an eraser for my marker. But you get the point. All right, everybody. Last motivational message for this fifth grade edition. Um, and this is actually a very fitting one, fitting message for this lesson. So when building a wall, don't focus on building the entire wall. Focus on laying each brick as perfectly as you can in that moment. Now, of course, I'm not talking about you guys going out there and building a wall. I'm speaking figuratively. Um, so for instance, maybe it's okay to have a goal and to focus in on that goal. But what you really need to focus on are the steps leading up to that goal. So let's say, like we've been talking about this entire time, that your goal is maybe to get a level four or a level five on this math FSA, showing that you have mastered these fifth grade standards. Um, you shouldn't be focusing the whole time on getting that fourth or fifth. That should be kind of your drive for it. But what you really need to focus on is the action steps that you put into place, that you go home and you lay each brick as best as you can, or you're in school and you lay a brick as best as you can. You listen to your teacher. You get extra practice in things that you are not too sure about right now. You go home and you watch these videos over and over again until you've got it locked down. And you focus on the ones that you don't know, okay? So lay each brick as perfectly as you can in that moment. Um, so what I wanna know is, in the comments below, what is your wall right now? What is your goal that you're reaching for? And what are the bricks that you can lay now to build that wall, okay? And what happens, why, why we don't wanna focus on the wall too much is that some, some of us get overwhelmed when we see the big goal, the big picture, when all we need to do is just focus on the little steps leading up to that, okay? Um, so that's all that I have for you. I'm putting the final brick on this wall called Making How to Pass the Math FSA videos for third, fourth, and fifth graders. Uh, it's been awesome, and I hope that you all have learned a lot. I've enjoyed this way of communicating with you, and I hope that we continue to do so. So make sure that you comment me, because I try to comment back as much as I can. And I will catch you guys later, because I've got some more ideas up my sleeve. So you keep checking back to McCarthy Math Academy, and I'll help you with your math and trying to make it as fun as I can. All right. Bye guys, woohoo, that's a wrap.